Hey friend, today I'm gonna to tell you about how our sheep are doing. We have three Gulf Coast native weathers and I wanna give a little bit more insight and feedback on what we think of having a wool sheep on our small homestead here in North Carolina where we're in zone 8A where it gets nice and hot and humid and how they're doing on our homestead. Now if you've been following our channel for any length of time, you'll know that we had dairy goats for a few years into our homesteading journey. We're now almost four years in and we've switched over to sheep. We do still have one of our goats, August. I call him my ditch goat because I have him in the ditch. We did bring back one of our other goats, Miss Zara, our large dairy mix. And I have her in with our three Gulf Coast native sheep. But we switched over to sheep because our goats had really stripped our property of the weeds. And so we had a lot more pasture coming in. And we really wanted to bring on an animal that could provide more meat. And then also, initially we looked into a hair breed sheep but I came across Gulf Coast Native and they're actually a triple purpose. So meat, wool, and milk. However, I don't know if I'll ever get to the point where I'm milking my sheep, but we started with three weathers because we really wanted to get a good feel for the breed before we bring on any type of breeding stock. And so we started with three weathers from Shangri-La in Georgia and I'll link a website. I'll link her website down in the description below so that you can go and check it out. But we've had a really great experience with these sheep. The key things for us is we wanted sheep that were already trained to electric net fencing and that were primarily on pasture and rotational graze rather than having additional supplemental feed. And so that was a big thing for us if we were going to eventually put them in the freezer was we wanted animals that were not regularly fed grain so that on our homestead they could thrive and let me tell you these guys are absolutely thriving so i'm going to be moving them today from this spot they've had access to the tall weeds behind the barn literally almost the height of the barn but they have really cleared it out i'll show you guys that and then josh has been gracious enough to mow me a path to the perimeter fence so that i can just go and hook it up in that fence can be nice and hot. Now our homestead looks very different this year, especially in terms of the brush that has grown in. We've got some really nice grasses here and then we have a lot of weeds still. And so as we continue rotational grazing, our pasture and our paddocks are only going to improve especially with the help of our sheep and our chickens. But I wanna bring you over and show you the back side of the barn. So we've got this section back here. This was completely full. You were not able to see through. So the sheep have done a great job clearing that out. Hey boys. So these are our three uh. Gulf Coast native weathers, Sinatra, Martin, and Junior, because we are big jazz fans. And then of course we have Zara. What's up, Zara? So she came back home to us. Um, we had given her to some friends and life changes happened and goats just don't really fit on their homestead anymore. And so we decided to go ahead and bring her back home so that we have the ability to have raw milk back on our homestead, which is really exciting since we've had a variety of different changes come on. So I'm gonna go over here and open up the fence so that they can start grazing the new spot. So we're gonna actually walk through here. They've done a really, really good job clearing this out. But again, these weeds are as tall as me. So Josh will have to come through here with the weed eater and really knock them down. But for now, we're gonna move this fence.
as I'm sitting here, sometimes the best thing you can do as a shepherd or anybody with livestock is just sit and observe your animals. And most of the time, especially if you do this on a regular basis, that's when you're going to catch disease early, that's when you're gonna catch illness early, that's when you're going to really be able to criticize your animal husbandry skills and where your animals are at. So Zara just came back to us a few days ago. So her body condition is pretty poor right now. She had twins a few months ago. And so she is really needing to add on some of that good muscle tone back, get her weight back up, add in some different supplements to really help her body condition in her coat. Um, and honestly, a lot of our good forage is going to do most of that. But this morning I added in some, some Thorvine kelp for them to just kind of browse on as needed. So kelp can do a lot of good things for your animals. So we're gonna try some of that, see if that'll help. I'll also add in some black oil sunflower seeds and offer them a good uh, sea salt supplement but it's very peaceful to just sit and watch them graze and it's interesting to see what plants they go after first and to watch the sheep kind of make a few rounds first before they're like okay this is where I'm going to stop and graze for a while So a lot of times if you do any sort of research on sheep and goats, they talk about how most of the forage that sheep will eat is from the shoulder down and goats eat from the shoulder up. And so it's interesting to see my sheep actually going for the plants that are taller than them first before grazing the plants that are below them. So, and Zara here is going for some brush that the sheep probably would not touch, which is nice. So I'm excited to see how pairing them really helps clear up a little bit more of the pasture. So, but this specific spot has not been grazed for quite a while. We added our Gulf Coast native sheep on Christmas Eve. And so we've had them, today is July 24th. So we have had them for exactly seven months now. And I really do love these sheep. It's amazing how our relationship has grown. Um, so when they first came here, they were pretty skittish of us. We would even just walk near the paddock and they would go to the opposite corner. So we've really done much better. And now when I come into the paddock, they'll actually come up and greet me first, which is pretty awesome and exciting. Um, they do trust me a lot more. I have had to catch them a few times and I'll actually sit down with a bowl of alfalfa pellets and have a leash. And normally, because we have one with horns, normally I catch him first. But he's not actually the lead sheep, and so the other two don't follow him if I catch him first. Um, so the sheep behind me here is Sinatra. So he's got a little extra afro going on on top. And then Junior has the horns and Martin is the one with no afro and no horns. 
but they've been really, really fun to have on the homestead and to rotational graze. They're extremely easy. So I just go to the side where I'm gonna open and leave that fence. I just go down, open the end, and they'll pretty much stay within a few feet of there so that I can take the fence and put it around and tie it back to the perimeter fence. So it's really cool to have animals that do that. Whereas like when we were rotating just the goats, they're like, oh, we're free. And they would go anywhere. And I would have to chase them around our property. And so like our house is in the middle with the garden. And I would chase them probably four or five times around the house and the garden before I finally got them back in the fence. So the sheep are extremely easy compared to the goats. They do let me know when they're ready to rotate. So if I have not moved them within the day or if I'm going to move them that day, they kind of feel that and they'll start yelling, hollering at me, telling me that they're ready to move, which is kind of fun. In May, we had them sheared and that took 20 minutes for Jonathan and Charlotte, who we hired to come out and shear them. It took them 20 minutes to shear all three of them. And I have not done anything with their wool yet. Uh, I just put it in some bags and those are hanging out in our closet until I'm ready to clean and wash and go through that process. It is the process and I wanna make sure that I have read up and studied it well before I start that process. So for now, the wool is hanging out in our closet, not doing anything, but their wool is already starting to grow back in nicely. I love the body condition that these boys have on our pasture and our paddocks. I have not had to supplement at all with anything, which is awesome. So the nice thing about us having a better relationship where now they'll come up to me, I can actually check over their body condition, make sure we're looking good, make sure eyes are looking good, poops are looking good, and their feet. I have not had to trim them yet. So some more information about Gulf Coast Native Sheep. I do have a section on our website, I'll link that down below too, where I talk a little bit more about the breed but we really selected this breed because they are disease resistant. They are also hoof rot resistant and they do amazing on pasture. In our last video, I actually mentioned that we'll be adding another sheep to the flock this fall. I'm really excited. So I found a good breeder that's actually in Tennessee this time and they are going to breed this sheep for me. So she's gonna to come to us bred. And yes, it's a girl. So we're gonna add an ew. And this is where planning ahead for your homestead, looking ahead big picture is important when you're adding animals to the homestead and creating a plan for that animal, what the plan's going to be. So for us, we do want to have meat in our freezer and with us getting rid of a lot of our larger animals and putting meat in the freezer this past year in preparation for our daughter that means that we are quickly depleting the larger meat source that we have in the freezer currently so uh, last month we did butcher some meat birds and we'll probably do another batch but planning ahead the sheep that we are bringing on the baby hopefully that she is pregnant with when she comes, when she gives birth next spring, that baby will then be raised with the attention to go into our freezer. So that will be a sustainable meat source for us when she comes. So purchasing her is not purchasing just her, but also the baby that's inside of her. So we're really excited about that. And then we'll probably add another sheep next spring with the future intent of sustainable lamb on our homestead. You guys decided to come closer now? Gulf Coast native sheep are from the Gulf Coast. So from the Louisiana, Alabama, 
Georgia area and they specifically were really hardy in at the high heat and high humidity down there and in zone 8a that's exactly what we have in the summers is we have hot days with anywhere from 70 to 90 percent humidity on average and so we wanted a breed of sheep that could really weather that well now a lot of people in our area have katahdins which are a hair breed sheep and so they don't get as hot but most of the people in our area when i was trying to research finding a breeder that did what we do most of them have to deworm have to treat for coccidia have to do hoof rot treatment and they don't rotationally graze them well and so they're really more of a hands-on breed whereas i wanted a breed that could be very limited in my outputs and inputs into them and so it was hard to find a breeder near us that had the same goals and mindset that we do when it comes to animal husbandry and raising livestock and so when I came across the Gulf Coast native breed a lot of people focus on preserving the breed because it's on the endangered species list and so a lot of people focus more on closed herds the overall health of the animal and then rotational grazing and so it honestly was not that difficult to find a breeder that did little to no grain feeding which these guys were introduced to grain just to be friendly it was not a supplemental feed for them it was just a treat and so that was a big thing for us and they already rotational graze using the electric net fencing again which was important to us to have sheep that were already trained to that now the big thing was these sheep were not dog broke and so bringing them onto our homestead obviously we raise australian shepherds and i wanted these sheep to be able to also use for herding practice for my dogs now the relationship that we have been able to grow between the dogs and the sheep has gotten much better especially with rogue's confidence uh, finn does not have the biggest confidence when it comes to the sheep just because his love is really for the birds he does not necessarily care to work the sheep he'll work them if i ask him to but that's not his forte but my biggest focus has really been introducing rogue to the sheep because i really want her to build that confidence that she has already and build that drive because i do want to work her on cattle someday and so the sheep are a great thing for her to try and work so i have a funny story to tell you that happened the other morning and i had let finn piper joy and rogue out together not everybody but just the four of them to go out to go potty and i went to go and let them in and piper finn and joy were standing at the back door which is not unusual but it was unusual that joy was there because normally her and rogue are like this so they're out playing being puppies together uh, for reference joy is about to turn a year old and rogue is six months and so the three of them were at the back door so i let them in and i called for rogue and she didn't come and normally she's very good about coming the first time i call and i called probably four or five times well all of a sudden the sheep come running past the back door and i'm like what in the world and she comes running after them and she stops at the back door and, and looks at me and she just has like the biggest grin on her face she's like <gasps> and i said what are you doing like why why are you bringing the sheep to me so kind of uh a, a little bit of of background knowledge so right now i'm not asking her to do a lot and i don't have big expectations for her when it comes to moving the livestock but i have worked with her on bringing the livestock to me and so bringing the chicken to me bringing the sheep to me uh you know in herding terms this is called fetching and it's the most natural thing that a herding dog does with the most instinct is fetching bringing, uh, gathering the livestock and bringing them in to the handler or their shepherd and so 
at first I was really upset. I was like, oh my goodness, why did my puppy just bring me the sheep? Well, come to find out, the sheep had knocked the fence down. And so I came outside with Jess Rogue. And of course I didn't bring my phone or the camera or anything. I, I really should have because this was really amazing to watch. But I set the fence up so that we could catch the sheep back here in this corner behind the barn. And then once we got them in the area, then I could close the fence back up. So I opened the fence up, I got it all set back up, got it ready. And the sheep were over on the other side of the house, uh, basically on the farthest part of the property opposite of where I wanted them to be. And so we go back there and they're just kind of standing in the corner. And so I decided, you know, let's just see what she's gonna do. So I told her, I said, okay, Rogue, go get them, go get the sheep. And of course she, she looks at me and she just smiles and um, she bounds over back behind them and gets them out of the corner and gets them running. And as they start running towards me, one of them splits off. So she goes after the one that splits off, gathers them back together and keeps pushing them towards me. And so my job is to make sure that they go in the area they're supposed to be, but I'm not supposed to be in the way to block them from where I need them to go. And so I continue walking down here to make sure that they go in the right area. And again, one splits and she gets them back to regroup and they move a little forward and one splits and she gets them back to regroup. And she is, is running the sheep at this point. And, and normally I want her to be nice and calm, keep the sheep nice and calm. But this morning, I didn't really want to be out here for a long time. This was at 6.30 in the morning. And... Uh, I still needed to go back in and feed Scout and everything. And so I said, okay, you know what? Let's see what she's got. Let's basically kind of take the training wheels off, let her figure out how she needs to move these sheep. Because I knew that she was not going to put so much pressure on them that she'd run them out of the perimeter fence, but just enough to get them where we needed them to go. And I'm confident now in her stopping when I ask her to. So I let her really run the sheep and she ran them back here into the corner. And as soon as she did, I said, yes, a girl, good job, that'll do. And then, you know what she did? This was incredible. And it, I'm just really excited about her future here as a working dog and, you know, at her future homestead and just her life with us in general. She laid down and covered the hole while I put the fence up and made sure that the sheep stayed where we needed them to stay. And just that maturity from her as a six month old puppy, like I am so pleased and so excited and so thrilled about her future and what she'll become as a working dog. Like Finn is finally to the point where he is on and he's working and he is in work mode. And so it's so exciting to see that from her at six months, whereas it's taken him four years to get to that point. But it just, it's really cool to see the relationship that our dogs have with the livestock. And I have a, another video coming out here soon about herding and, and where my dogs are currently in their training uh, with the livestock and, and what it looks like for them to help me on a daily basis so that you guys can get a better feel if you're contemplating adding a working dog, what that looks like on a daily basis, rather than just, you know, when you have special instances and you need to use those dogs to move livestock in a more formal manner, what it looks like for the nitty gritty, the daily stuff that, you know, is not as fun or as exciting, but it still is necessary and needed. We've loved having our sheep. They've been such a cool, cool addition. And I'm really excited to continue using them with our dogs for herding. And I'm really excited in October, we'll be going to the Homesteaders of America conference again. And we will be offering herding demonstrations with our sheep and some of our chickens and our dogs. I'm pretty sure at this point, we're just gonna bring Finn and Rogue with us so that we can bring our sheep and some chickens and really just showcase what it looks like to have the dogs work livestock on a small scale.
Now, if you're considering adding sheep to your homestead, I do want to encourage you to find a breeder who does what you do or what you want to do with your animals. The biggest thing for us is we did not want to bring on a breed of sheep that we would be doing a disservice to by bringing them to a homestead where they would be rotational grazed primarily in hot, humid weather. You know, the Icelandics are beautiful sheep. I've heard great things about their meat and their wool, but it just did not make sense for us to bring a breed of sheep that was not bred or designed to withstand hot, humid climates. You know, there's a couple accounts I follow who have Icelandics, but they are on the coast and more like the Northwest coast and the Northeast coast. They're not in the middle of North Carolina with hot, humid plains, really. But in just, just cool. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video all about our sheep. We'll see you next time.